Greetings from New Jersey. Just pulled off the freeway here. We're in Trenton, New Jersey, the capital, as it were. Be honest, mostly just pulled off to stop at a Duncan, use some internet. There is said Capitol buildings. You can see it's under some pretty major renovations. There we see it. Right over here is a pretty cool statue, some artwork. This gal wielding her sword. Looking pretty badass. Bunch of war memorial type stuff over here. Some more over on this side. Steps here and they got this giant, looks like a giant army man. A little green army men from when you're a kid. I mean, it looks like the giant life-size version of that. I think I even had one doing that pose. Some water features back here. I don't know if you can quite tell on camera. That's a little waterfall though. It's got to be a sort of fallen soldier memorial. A nice little park. About to hop back on the freeway here. And now New Jersey. My stop was brief, but yeah, kind of memorable. I'm gonna find out Jersey's one of those we pump your gas states. As far as I know, them and Oregon only states to do that. All right, so we're crossing over the Delaware River, heading into Pennsylvania. It's a pretty unique bridge. Definitely more narrow than most roadways of today. Almost there. Next stop on the list. Today we're in Philadelphia, birthplace of freedom and American independence. And much like Boston, oh, trying to get run over here. We're gonna see all the touristy bullshit today. There's a lot of it here. Got a long list of things. Luckily, they're all pretty much in the same area. So we're heading toward the first stop right now. Got a sunny day after two straight days of rain, three days maybe. It'll be a nice one. Let's do it. There it is, waving, kind of majestic. Very first flag ever, American history. Just 13 stars on her. That's right, we're at the Betsy Ross house. Famous seamstress. Made the very first, very first flag in US history. Credited to this woman. She sewed it up right here in this house. Got a little museum out here. Looks to be drawing a nice little crowd too. Today's Memorial Day, so gonna be plenty of American rhetoric, plenty of people out here in this bustling area. Many of my travels, I've come across some really old historic streets in the US. And you always kind of wonder, maybe this is like one of the oldest ones that's still left out there, but there is one true oldest street in America. And we're looking at it right now. These flags serve as a reminder from the time period in which some of these houses were built. The street dates back to 1703. You gotta figure, that was 73 years before the Declaration of Independence. This was still England. And today there are still people living in each one of these homes. That's right, these are homes. Who knows, maybe some of them are Airbnbs. I should look into that, that'd actually be pretty cool. But you gotta imagine the people that live here are pretty lenient, pretty cool, given that they allow us all to come through here and do our usual tourist thing pretty much all hours of the day. But you gotta do it. It's like walking through history. Unique experience. Feels like a place you're probably not supposed to ride your bike, but yeah, try it out, nice and slow. Do this without crashing. <laughs> Woo, made it. Working our way over to the next site, over some bumpy terrain. It's kind of cool road. I don't know what it is. It's not cobblestone, but kind of, kind of similar. Historic Christ Church in Philadelphia. This is a pretty unique one. The building itself is pretty cool. You'll see some shots of it here, but what's unique about this church, it was built in 1695, and it has not missed 
a religious service since 1695. The brick building you see here before you was actually built in the early 18th century. What's interesting is that it was built around the original wooden structure so that they would not miss a religious service, and they never have. It still runs to this day in this site. George Washington has a pew here. John Adams has a pew here. Working our way east toward the Delaware River, other side of which sits Camden, New Jersey. This really cool statue over here. I promised you some American rhetoric. And this is it. I don't know what's more American than this guy right here. That's a native with a freaking eagle on his shoulder. A lot of people think of America, they think of cowboys and country and apple pie, but it's important to remember this was home to millions of people before we ever got here. Everywhere you look here, there's more history. There's a plaque here saying that right at this site, Pennsylvania Abolition Society was founded in 1775. I mean, that's a bit of a paradox. And you figure that just a few years later, we're going to see the house where George Washington lived with nine of his 300 slaves. Ah, another historic site. Look at that. Birthplace of the U.S. Marine Corps in a tavern in Philadelphia. To a pretty good start. I haven't even really seen the best stuff yet. Yeah, I'm back over freeway toward downtown and check out a few more stops. This building is actually the site of the first stock exchange in U.S. history. This is the Merchant Exchange Building. Just around the corner from that, this is the first federal bank in U.S. history. And even more interesting, that eagle you see right there, that was the first time an eagle had ever been used on a federal building as a symbol for America. Something we think of synonymous with America these days. This was the very first time it had ever been used. This building has fallen into some disrepair, but good news is they're actually renovating it right now. They're going to reopen it as a museum. From what I understand, uh, the play, the musical Hamilton, is partly responsible for raising awareness for this building and getting them to start to rebuild. Up there are some of the founding ideals of this country. Words from the Declaration. This little cannon display right out front here on the corner. Standing in front of Carpenter's Hall. This building was actually used as a trade guild, but some of our founding fathers did meet here and debate some of those key issues. Just behind it is Congress Hall, which did actually serve as a meeting for the first Congress, though they did meet primarily in Federal Hall. Plaque explaining this pretty cool statue over here commemorating the signing of both the Declaration and the Constitution. We saw the first federal bank, which you're looking at now is actually the second one. This is the one that replaced it. Got the statue of old George Washington there in front of Independence Hall. This is the star of the show when it comes to historical things in Philadelphia. In fact, in the whole country, this is pretty undeniably the most historic site in the entire country. This is where the Declaration of Independence was debated and signed. A few years later, this is where the Constitution was debated, drafted, and signed. So many huge historical moments happened right at this site. Right in that room, 56 men met in that infamous summer of 1776, trying to decide what the hell to do about England. They met in June. Five delegates were selected. Basically, Thomas Jefferson did all the work, though, in writing up the Declaration. Thomas Jefferson submitted the document on July 2nd. They went over it, made a bunch of corrections, made it official on July 4th, and right here, it was announced to the public on July 8th. biggest moment in our nation's history all happened right in this building. Up there in the towers where the Liberty Bell was, it's still around here somewhere in its cracked form. There is a bell in that tower, as you heard. It still chimes on the hour. And there she is, the old Liberty Bell. That is the actual one. I've seen many a recreation. 
Never the original. You can go inside there. I'm not sure of the fee. I'm going to skip it because there's a tremendously long line. It is Memorial Day after all. Little info up there. You can pause and take a look if you like. Tell you about the symbolism of the bell and how it was ironically made in England. Nothing. And here is the Liberty Bell Center. This is the entrance to the museum where you can see the bell and a number of other things. But that line is no joke, and it is a warm one today. This is a really cool thing. This is the site of the house that George Washington and John Adams lived in while they served as president. This was basically the first White House. They lived right here. It's actually right next to the Liberty Bell Center. Some of the original foundation still down there, and they've got sort of a recreation up here. It's just sort of an open air park with all this information. This is the actual outline of the house. George Washington lived in this house while he was a president. They tell you all about his nine slaves that lived here with them. They actually have quite a bit of information on them. They really don't shy away from the slavery aspect at all. It's kind of impressive. A lot of museums and historical sites I've come across really downplay that aspect of our history. I think it's important we learn both. I just rode by this adorable little roller dachshund standing here at Benjamin Franklin's grave. Do my part to contribute. This is where his whole family is buried. He, his wife, and I believe some of his children and grandchildren are in this plot as well. Next to the grave, I've got a timeline here of the man's life and many accomplishments. First to use electricity, postmaster general, continental congress, not to mention being on everybody's favorite denomination, the hundred. It's a little modern U.S. history for you. They've got that, too. 1979. This is where they met to organize a march on Washington for gay and lesbian rights. It's a really cool mural here on the side of this building, honoring the Philadelphia Fire Department. Right next to the big old bust, Benjamin Franklin. Try to get the lighting a little better. There we go. Old Ben. Riding the bike a bit south of downtown. Seems to be where all the good spots to eat at are. The gym steaks over here. This one didn't even pop up on my searches, to be honest, but boy, look at that line. A lot of famous places to get a good cheese steak here. This is what they're known for. Pat's Steaks, right across from Gino's. Gino's earned my business. This has been on many food shows, food network and stuff. Very famous place. Plus, they had the longer line when I walked up. That's got to mean something. Yeah, Running like clockwork. Almost to the front. This has been a pretty good wait. Setting the bar pretty high. Ooh, cute dog. It is cash only. This is their sandwich menu. Looks like they got a few options. Let me get the cheesesteak. So you order your sandwiches at this window, and then you go down to that window to order drinks and fries. All right. Let's go at Gino. It's a heck of a thing. Oh, no, a lot of onions. Yeah, I'm going to de-onion this just a little bit. I don't want to lose the experience, but it's a bit much. Mm. That's fantastic. Nice soft bread. Oh, meat is super good too. say. Never been one to really order cheesesteaks too often. I don't know how common they really even are on the West Coast, but that was definitely the best cheesesteak I've ever had. That was fantastic. Everything about it was delicious. Definitely try Gino's if you're here. Another cool statue. 
This one of Robert Morris, another one of our founding fathers. He signed the Declaration and the Constitution. Also helped establish some of these fine financial institutions that lived here in Philadelphia before ultimately moving to New York, Wall Street. Riding through Independence Square. This is the park just in front of the Independence Hall. And it's right catty corner across from Washington Square. No, not the one in New York. Apparently there were several. He was an important man. Nice little fountain display in the middle, and they appear to be doing some kind of Memorial Day thing over here. The occasion several times this past week to hear someone wish Happy Memorial Day. It is sad that so many have forgotten not certain the masks on those actors were period correct. You'll always be able to tell from photos that it was Memorial Day during the pandemic. Ah, taking a little breather. I'm here at my uh, unofficial hotel for the night. Found a nice, reasonably priced parking structure. Great location, too. I'm pretty much right in the thick of it, about a block from the Liberty Bell. Pretty close to that bridge over there. Too bad. 20 bucks a night. Can't really beat that. Oh, I got some good sightseeing done today. I got a little sidetracked. It's a random ass flat tire. I still have no idea what caused it, but I was several miles from where the van is parked, which was a bit of a problem. But hey, technology and stuff. Googled bicycle shop, and next thing I knew, found one just a few blocks away. Walked over there, and dude set me up with a new tube, so disaster averted. Oh. It's ice cold, thank God. Mm -hmm. ah, pretty cool view though up here. I think we're on the fifth, sixth, fifth floor? Fifth floor. Not super high, but not too bad actually. I kind of got this whole structure to myself. There's a few people on like the first two floors, but <laughs> the rest of them are completely empty. It's kind of fun too to get down. I, uh, well, I was taking the bike, of course. And you can take the stairs or the tiny elevator, or you can just kind of take the ramps. And they just circle the whole way down. You never have to pedal once. I hang out here and rehydrate if you have a snack. And uh, I don't know. Probably just kind of wander around, do my thing, take advantage of this sweet location. Couldn't ask for a better part of town. I'm right next to all the historic stuff. Also right next to downtown, which does include a lot of good places to eat. After riding around, I think I will dine in Chinatown. Thank you for watching. Please click like or even possibly subscribe for more adventures.